All right, thank you, Daniel, for uh, the kind introduction. So uh, yeah, they, uh, this is, hi everyone, this is Jing Hao, and it's uh, good to see that, uh, you know, there are a lot of uh, use cases of eBPF onto security this, today, and uh, I'm gonna add more to that. So uh, today I'm gonna talk about how we can leverage uh, eBPF to implement a uh, more advanced kernel control for integrity framework. So um, as kernel developers, we all know that the kernel code makes extensive use of function pointers, and those function pointers, uh, you know, they add to the kernel flexibility. However, um, if you corrupt them, uh, if, if they get corrupted, uh, they allow the control flow hijacking attacks. And uh, for example, in this, oops, yeah, in this really old, uh, not really old, but uh, old uh, vulnerability from 2016, um, a privileged escalation is possible um, by overriding a function pointer following a use after free. Um, so basically, in the kernel, there is this um, key revoke function, which is supposed to call a key type specific revoke function, which is stored in a function pointer. And with that use after free, the attacker was able to corrupt the function pointer and then uh, redirect the control flow to her own. Um, Revoke function, which in turn invokes the uh, the kernel credential functions to uh, perform the privilege escalation. So, and to mitigate the um, the control flow hijacking attacks, control flow integrity, or uh, CFI, uh, is introduced. So, uh, the basic idea of CFI is that it restricts your program control flow to its control flow graph, and it verifies uh, each in uh, each indirect control flow transfer, like indirect calls, returns. Uh, to make sure that those are valid to perform. And um, the CFG used by uh, control flow integrity can be generated both statically or dynamically. So uh, get back to our example, um, when the attacker tries to redirect the control flow to her, to her own um, you know, revoke function, and with CFI de deployed, um, it's gonna fill the check and um, the, uh, the process will be terminated. So um, with that, um, however, the, uh, the kernel CFI um, approaches uh, currently are still uh, inflexible. So um, on Linux, the existing CFI techniques is uh, the LVM-based KCFI. So um, the LVM KCFI uses a static policy based on the function prototypes. And um, a enabling or disabling this uh, KCFI uh, instrumentation requires you know, a, a kernel, a change in kernel configuration and therefore a rebuild and reboot. So the problem here is really that the, the KCFI policies are, are statically defined, which makes them hard to catch the uh, state of the art CFI, which is always a moving target. And then, you know, when, when you are trying to catch that target, you need to change your, your policies, but policy changes in turn requires kernel rebuild and reboot. So, uh, you know, those causes service disruption and also increase response time against new vulnerabilities, and uh, it's just not flexible enough. And at the same time, the stack of policies makes it, actually makes it hard to leverage and uh, runtime context. So um, we believe that eBPF, it's, uh, it's actually a power, to, power tool in the context of kernel CFI. And, so eBPF can make the kernel CFI easy to deploy because if you write your KCFI policies in eBPF program and hook them into uh, onto the kernel, essentially you um, the the changes or or enabling disabling the, the the KCFI policies does not require a kernel reboot and reboot anymore, and then at the same time the expressiveness and observability superpower of eBPF can really um, sort of beef up the policies you can you can write for KCFI. For example, those uh, dynamic policies that also traces the origin of the indirect calls. And then finally, um, the eBPF can also make KCFI um, you know, with finer granularity. And basically, we can selectively attach the BPF programs to the particular call set we care about. So, um, you know. With, with the uh, promises of eBPF on uh, kernel CFI, let's um, sort of try to lay out what are the needed pieces um, for a simple kernel CFI, uh, eBPF-based kernel CFI. 
So let's consider this the you know the simplest form of KCFI, which is you know just check against the static CFG. And so for that, we definitely need a uh, a way to store our uh, control flow graph. And um, then we need a way to obtain the information about the current in control flow transfer. So basically, we want the source and the destination. And with those information, we would like to um, check against you know check against it and um, enforce our uh, CFI policy. So um, put it in terms of eBPF and the CFI, CFG storage can be done um, intuitively in an eBPF map, but the later two, namely uh, the control flow transfer information and the policy enforcement um, really depends on your attachment point. So um, before we going into the actual implementation, let me first uh, you know, lay out the, uh, the scope and the threat model of this talk. So uh, we believe that the kernel is benign, but they may contain vulnerabilities that allows attackers to corrupt the kernel memory and therefore you know, corrupt the kernel uh, func function pointer. And the attacker would attack the kernel by issuing, uh, by issuing syscalls or sending network packets. And here we trust the eBPF-based uh, KCFI infrastructure. And uh, right now, um, our current focus it will be on the indirect calls. So uh, when we think about instrumenting the indirect call, the uh, most intuitive um, way of doing it in eBPF is to use a K-probe because K-probe allows us to attach to almost any kernel attack strategies. So here we can just directly attach a K-probe onto the uh, indirect call instructions. And to obtain the control flow transfer information, since the K-probe takes in the, uh, the PT regs as the program context argument, we can easily grab the, um, the caller and the callee from the registers. And then to enforce our policy, um, for example, if, when the check fails, uh, we can use BPF send signal to terminate the, uh, the offending task. And alternatively, uh, we can also use the, um, the crash kexec uh, kfunk to force a kernel panic if, you, you know, if that's desired. But um, you know, the problem of, of kprobe is that it uses a interrupt by default. So um, this, um, this nature adds a significant context switch overhead uh, whenever the program is triggered. And we actually measured a 26x overhead on our, uh, on our chemo test machine uh, for a single indirect call. So, um, you know, as kernel developers, you probably know about the jump optimization of kprobe, which optimizes the, uh, the kprobe instrument instrumentation into a synchronous jump. So um, with this jump, uh, the context switch and the interrupts are no longer needed. So yeah, what about the jump optimization? Um, the, uh, the unfortunate fact is that um, if we're attaching to a call instruction, such a K-probe cannot, uh, cannot be optimized, basically because the call instruction are not boostable uh, in terms of, uh, of K-probe. And um, another thing we tried is that, you know, since the LLVM KCFI is gonna add these um, instructions right before the indirect call, and the first instruction is always a move. And so a move instruction is, is, is jump, to, jump optimizable in KPRO. So can we just attach to the LVM KCF instructions? Uh, the answer is again, no, because the LVM KCF instructions are, are indeed special. The, uh, the KCF failure handler needs to decode the, uh, those instructions upon, you know, upon a KCF failure. And overwriting those instructions will actually break the handler. So apparently, um, you know, the question we want to ask is that: Is there a more efficient solution? So, um, therefore, here comes our, you know, our second approach, which is a fprobe-based approach, and this is derived from uh, Daniel Workman's suggestion on the use of fentry. So, thank you, Daniel. Um, so here, uh, the kprobe multi attachment tab in eBPF allows you to, uh, allows you to uh, attach the uh, functions using the fprobe infrastructure. And here, um, upon, uh, in fprobe, the program is executed 
and <clears throat> upon the function entry, and it is a synchronous invocation. So this makes it more efficient than interrupts. So for example, here uh, we have this indirect call, and suppo let's suppose that it calls into uh, some function uh, foo. And then if we attach to fprop, fprop is gonna override this uh, five, five, no, five by no op at the start of the function into a call to the uh, fprop trampoline, which in turn calls our program. To obtain the, con the uh, control flow information in app, uh, using, in, in, I mean, in app prop uh, programs, um, we can use the, uh, the stack trace functionality from eBPF. So basically we can do uh, BPF get stack to get the caller address. And uh, for the callee, it is, it is um, always the currently probed function. So getting that is also, uh, also easy. And in terms of enforcement, this is uh, similar as K-probe. You can choose to use you know, BPF send, send signal or um, crash k exact. Uh, one thing worth mentioning is that uh, um, the use of app probe um, to, to perform KCFI inf enforcement requires the use of LLVM KCFI because app probe makes the implicit assumption that whenever you call, uh, whenever you do a, a, a indirect control flow transfer, you're always landing on the entry of a function. But um, in, in reality, you may not always do. So LLVM KCFI will force it will enforce that uh, such a control flow transfer always land at the entry of the function. But with that being said, an app prop does has its own limitations. And the first limitation is that app prop has a less coverage than the, uh, I mean, on the indirect calls on, on KCFI than the LVM based KCFI. And those are because a lot of functions you cannot attach app prop onto. For example, there are functions in the kernel mark that has no instrumentation or no trace. And to make it worse, um, all the functions in the trace subsystem and all the, all the library functions are just compiled without fprob, ftrace support. So in total, uh, we found that there are around 10K functions out of the uh, 59K on our, uh, on our uh, test kernel that cannot be attached. And at the same time, an fprob does not distinguish between direct and indirect calls. Um, this, is means, this means that the program will always be executed whenever the function is invoked. No matter it's like invoked directly where we don't need to check or it's invoked indirectly where, where we do want to check. So um, there are, as we all know that there are much more um, direct calls than indirect calls in the kernel. And in fact, um, when we test this on LE bench, we found a seven times slowdown on our test key, uh, test key environment. So um, let's quickly um, sort of recap what we, what we have at this point. So we have two mechanisms, K-probe and F-probe. And um, K-probe can attach to directly down to the indirect cost, where F-probe attached to function entries. And in terms of uh, in the invocation of eBPF, kprob uses interrupt, and fprob is just a, uh, synchron a synchronous function call from the trampoline. And in turn, um, the kprob suffers from context switch overhead, where fprob only has function call overhead, but uh, it, al it also pays the overhead on, the, on all the direct calls. And lastly, uh, for KCFI coverage, um, kprob can get roughly the same as um, LLVM KCFI coverage, where FPROB has a 17% uh, um, lower coverage than LLVM KCFI. So at this point, um, it, you know, we can conclude that the existing BPF attachment is um, actually not enough for a, uh, for a you know, practical KCFI instrumentation. So um, we think that a new attachment mechanism is needed. Um, it would be great that if we, if we can do a synchronous invocation, and at the same time, we can just instrument processly the indirect calls covered by LLVM KCFI. So therefore, we implemented our own framework, and we, we call it the eKCFI. So it's basically a new way to hook eBPI programs onto those indirect call sites. Um, so our um, eKCFI module is gonna, oops, it's gonna redirect the control flow 
uh, it's going to in instrument the kernel code and um, create a hook point at the indirect calls, which is going to redirect, redirect the control flow onto the uh, onto the KCF trampoline. And the, the EKCF trampoline is going to perform a synchronous invocation on the eBPF policy programs. And um, similar to uh, you know, K-probe and F-probe, the policy program still decides whether to allow this control flow transfer or not. It can, it can choose to continue execution or trigger a kernel panic. So let's take a look like, at uh, how we actually instrument the kernel code. Um, we are pretty much using the uh, same type of, uh, you know, the same mechanism already used by F-probe. Um, we use uh, LVM to generate in two actor instructions at indirect tra uh, control flow transfers. This includes a move to save the Kali, uh, to save the Kali address into RAX. And, um, at, and the next instruction is a five by no op instruction, which can be dynamically overwritten, just like what we had in uh, Ftrace. And um, in this way, uh, we can dynamically rewrite no op into a call to our uh, EKCF trampoline. And this trampoline, um, it's actually responsible for uh, a bunch of stuff. And it's going to save all the save the needed registers. It's going to um, obtain the Kali from RAX, where we just stored into, and also obtain the caller from its own return address. And then, then it's going to prevent recursive KCF, uh, KCF instrumentation because that will re result in an infinite loop. It invokes our ABPF program with the KCFI context. And finally, it, uh, they, it interpret the return value from the program to perform the, the corresponding actions. So here, uh, our EKCFI trampoline invokes the, uh, the BPF policy program. And um, in, in, in the context of EKCFI, getting the, uh, the indirect control flow transfer information is easy because the trampoline already packed the caller and calling information into the program context. So you, you just directly grab it. And then um, for the enforcement, uh, the enforcement it's implemented by the program return value. It's kind of like what we had in in Seconf. Um, so if the program returns a um, EKCFI red panic, uh, the trampoline is gonna trigger a kernel panic in turn. So here, uh, let's add EKCFI to our existing design space. Um, so here we have EKCFI, which hooks onto the indirect calls, and it performs a synchronous call on our, on our eBPF program. It only pays the function call overhead, and um, its coverage can be exactly the same as LVM KCFI. So um, we evaluated the performance of EKCFI onto uh, you know, some applications. Here we... Uh, we tested it on uh, Nginx and also Linux kernel compilation. Um, the policy we enforce on EKCFI is a fine-grained CFG, where, which we obtained from the uh, dynamic traces. So uh, we found that EKCFI can, can achieve roughly the same level of performance as the LVM-based KCFI, at least on the, uh, the macro benchmarks. And, um, but I guess um, a, a good thing to note is that the performance really depends on how many in, how many indirect calls you hit during the execution. So we also tested onto the LM bench macro benchmark, and um, again we enforced a, um, a fine grained CFG from dynamic trace. So here um, from this graph you can see that um, around half of the benchmarks um, the performance is actually on par with LLM, LLVM KCFI. But and also for certain benchmarks like poll and select, um, the performance is like almost um, three times slower than the LVM-based KCFI. Another interest and interesting aspect of EKCFI is the uh, you know the no op overhead. So basically, the um, the instrumentation overhead we have, even though the um, the KCFI is actually not enabled. So um, here we actually plotted the, um, the overhead of NOOPs added at different levels. So here we have, uh, at, we have NOOPs added at indirect call level, which is exactly what KC EKCFI is doing. And we have um, the NOOPs added at you know, basic block level and instruction level, so basically before each instruction. And um, so the takeaway here is that um, 
you know, um, adding it at indirect call level, so instrumenting kernel code just at the indirect call side, um, does not have um, a huge overhead. But um, if, say, uh, someone wants to inst instrument arbitrary kernel, um, kernel instructions using this framework, uh, she is going to pay for up to 75% overhead on the, you know, on the uh, instruction level instrumentation. So, and I hope I convinced you that um, eBPF is like, it's a, um, it, 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 it's, a, a, it's a powerful tool in the context of KCFI. Um, but here, um, let's face, you know, the limitations of eBPF-based KCFI. Um, so the, the first problem is that we have to trust the eBPF subsystem, but in our threat model, we actually assume that the attacker can corrupt kernel memory. So that means the, the attacker might be able to corrupt memory of the hopper functions or the maps. And in terms of um, protection, we, we think that uh, hardware-based um, mechanisms, for example, in Intel MPK, might be useful, must be, might be useful, uh, useful for maps, but um, the kernel helper functions are still hard because they call deeply into the kernel. Um, and um, lastly, uh, I, I think I want to note that um, EKCFI does not mean to replace the LVM-based KCFI. Uh, instead, we sort of complement the LVM KCFI to further enhance the security of the kernel. And uh, to conclude, so uh, we think that eBPF can make kernel CFI more flexible and usable. And um, unfortunately, existing BPF mechanisms are insufficient for a practical CFI framework, basically, basically because of the uh, performance and hook point problems. And so here, we, de we, de we develop the, uh, the EKCFI framework, which is a eBPF-based uh, you know, KCFI framework with a new hooking mechanism for efficient indirect call checking. So um, that concludes my talk. Thanks. And I'm happy to take any questions. So could you please elaborate a bit more on your use case, the use case you're trying to enable with this mechanism? Because you mentioned that you want flexibility, and, and you gave an example that you don't want to recompile a kernel, but when do you want that flexibility of changing the CFI policies, given that the kernel doesn't change? So I'm not understanding. So, so yeah, and that is a good question. So um, we know that the CFI is uh, still quite a hot topic and it's uh, the state of the art CFI is like, it's a ever moving target. So if you, if you want the state of the art policy in the kernel, you probably need to, uh, you know, change it very often. And um, in that case, if you are changing your policy, then you, you're gonna recompile your kernel if, you know, the, your instrumentation are like st statically compiled in. Okay, so, so you're targeting the use case where kernel stays the same, but you want to, you know, use latest and greatest, like, you know, the control flow mechanism for exactly. that. So, okay. Yeah, for, for example, um, say you're just using a CFG-based uh, KCFI policy, and then someone said um, that, okay, I have a CFI policy mechanism which is based on the origin sensitivity uh, of, based on the origin of these uh, function pointer assignment then um, apparently you need a, a different way to instrument the kernel and then you, you basically have to recompile. But, but in principle, this, it will still require you to use, like you can't, because you said that you can enable it like, you know, on certain functions and things, but in order to get a proper protection, you will have to enable this on everything. So, so and, and as much fine grained as you want, since you're talking about, you know, the latest CFI policies. So, so in fact, you can't just go and enable it on some critical functions, you will really like, it, it, it's like second, it would be like a second CFI on everything then for, for, for eBPF. Right, so, um, yeah, but and I guess the uh, selectively attaching to the KCFI functions, it's sort of a, uh, you know, it's sort of a performance optimization in case, I mean, if you don't, if you, if you, if you don't care about performance, then why not applying it to all the, uh, all the kernel functions you care about? But, and, uh, you know, and if you really care about, if, if you now care about the performance and then, and then there are some uh, components like, like you know that are not that um, known for like, uh, like informers for the uh, vulnerabilities, then you probably just, uh, just gonna protect the, uh, the critical part of the kernel. 
but, but critical, like, you know, you gave this example of commit creds. Of course, you can kind of you know, protect, you know, who can call into commit creds, but it's possible to kind of, you know, do the wrappers around. So in principle, like, you know, it's rope chain, so you can try to build more complex chains. So in order to have full proven, you actually have to cover everything. That's why, you know, the full control flow. But anyway, it's interesting. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so what you did with this EKCFI uh, trampoline stuff, right? It sounds right. like what I would expect the raw trace points do. Did you did you consider adding like kind of trace points? Um, yeah. So um, I guess it. So uh, okay. Let me put it this way. So uh, normally when you do a trace point, you have to add the function call into the kernel, right? So apparently you don't want to manually add the like trace blah, 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 say trace EKCFI, that trace point function before a chain direct calls. Um, and what- Yeah, you can, the assumption was that like you, you can instrument it somehow or something, but yeah, I, I'm I just guess, curious about the performance implications actually. So um, yeah, I guess um, what you can do with trace point is that you can rewrite that no op to point to your trace point hook but trace point actually has its own um, problems in terms of EKCFI because the trace point hook, um, I mean, the trace point hook actually, it's actually pretty generic. It can, it, it contains not only uh, the code that, that powers the BPF, uh, the BPF trace point, but also like trace point K other stuff. So um, actually that adds more overhead than uh, just do like the F entry way. Oh, now not really the F entry, but EKCFI rewriting it to a trampoline. Uh, very interesting talk. Uh, I was wondering whether you, so essentially you're adding like knob five in front of every indirect call, if right. I understood. Yeah. So have you considered adding instead of knob five, like knob 10 or whatever you need to? And then instead of doing like policy collecting like <coughs> caller and a Kali addresses and doing lookup based on two addresses, do it exactly the same way that the LVM does. Like compute some hash for every like different call site and insert instead of like populating your trampoline with just an direct call to your VPF program, like put whatever instruction necessary, like compute that hash, put it in there, and on the caller side, just check check this hash. Exactly the same way LVM does, but do like everything dynamically. So let me try to understand your uh, proposal. Like, I'm proposing the same what LVM does, the mm -hmm. same code that LVM generates, but do the same dynamically. Right. And um, I think uh, there's another thing I didn't mention about the LVM KCFI is that because it, because the, the policy it implement is, you know, just based on function prototype, it's not a, you know, in the KCFI world, it's not a fine-grained KCFI policy. So um, if you want to do a more like a fine-grained KCFI policy, I think you, you, you sort of need to um, do the eBPF way. We'll probably take it offline. <laughs> it's easy at the whiteboard. Uh, can you talk some more about the uh, control plane aspect? I mean, you populate this map with the addresses, right? Yes. So that might change maybe for every reboot or like how, I'm, I'm not quite sure. Like. Um, yeah, so, um, right, so I, I have to admit that right now it's uh, sort of something we didn't thoroughly think through. At this point, what we did is that we are uh, sort of, we boot the kernel and we dynamically traced the, uh, the, the function, the indirect function calls. So, you know, it's the same kernel, so it, that address always works. But yeah, that's a, that's a good point. And then you also need to uh, have some kind of workload that uh, runs exactly the exactly. things you want to populate in the map, right. otherwise you panic, right? Yeah. Uh, so my question is, uh, have you done this for just the static pieces of the kernel or the, will this work when kernel modules come into picture? Uh, right now it's only the, uh, you know, the core kernel itself. 
uh, it, we do not consider kernel modules. But um, I think that uh, you know, since the uh, the the instruction, the extra extra instrumentation insertion is compiled um, is compiler based, so it should work for kernel modules as well. But that would mean you have to load the map dynamically. You have to. Sorry, what? The con the graph, the control graph. It it that can change, right? When modules come into picture. Um. Yes. Right, so basically you need to uh, recompute the, uh, the control flow graph. And that is uh, another security vulnerability in all the things that you have listed. Um, so that, that is one more way an attacker can target you and... I'm sorry, can, could you repeat? No, if you change the control graph for your system in between runs, uh, that is another potential vulnerability in your kernel. Isn't that right? Right. Okay. So right now this is only for static. Yeah, right kernel. now it's only for the core kernel image. Not just to say that you, you can protect the changes. So you, if, if you need to, you know, if you now upload, load it to kernel module and you need to upload, you know, update the graph and you, it's, you know, authorized operation, you, you can make it authorized operation. So I don't think that is a problem. The same problem also exists for EVPF programs itself, right? Because you also don't know when you load a program to hook that this new program could be executed if mm -hmm. you want to protect that as well. Right. I think currently the EVPF programs are not protected. I saw that the, uh, the, the special function is like marked with no CFI. Cool. Any other comments? Looks like not. Thank you very much. Thanks.